world, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. This is the Wrestling Matters Podcast where we stand up for professional wrestling. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. Well enough is enough and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. I'm making that. Dina, I am the best in the world. Because that's the bottom line. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is ladies listening to this podcast, my name is Anthony Walker, your favorite host, as always, each and every week for the Wrestling Matters Podcast. This is episode 141 of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Yes, I can't believe I have made it this long. But yeah, all the hard work will pay off. And it has paid off for me because it's been worth it ever since. And I talk about the best thing that I love, that is professional wrestling. On today's show, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk TLC. That's right. Questionable TLC, we'll find out later on. But TLC will be here. Raw and SmackDown. Plus, I didn't do this last week on the podcast, but I'll do it this week as well. A feature-length part of the Lexa Rose podcast to make up for not having it last week. So that'll be up later on as well. And we're going to talk three other topics as well on this podcast. All, oh, by the way, I'm not alone. Did I mention I have a guest? I know you like guests on this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. But I've got a guest who was making his debut. He has been all over the network. He is working with other. He's worked with other people. You know, he's a podcaster guest in his own right as well. He's worked with my mentor as well, Mr. Kenny Killer. He's making his debut on the podcast. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Fame Black. The Nature Boy, Fame Black, the Snapchat extraordinaire on all social media as F A M E B L A C K. It it seems like I'm taking over Swerve Talk this month because I was on Max Wrestling. I was on Sunday Segway last Sunday. I was on Max Wrestling a couple weeks ago. And now I'm sitting here on the Wrestling Matters podcast. And I can't help but wonder what is Fame Black going to do next? You gotta follow me on Snapchat to be sure. Yeah, At Fame Black. Speaking of Max Wrestling and Sunday Segway, this episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast is on the Swift Hunt Network with Woo! Max Wrestling, Sunday Segway, Offshoot Radio, and any other stuff that is on there as well. I say this every week, guys. I know you're probably sick of me hearing, it, sick of hearing it, because I say this every week, but I have Unless to report it. For the first time. Yeah, unless you've heard it for the first time, of course. But I know you guys are probably sick of me hearing it. Like I said, unless you heard it from the first time. But it's what I have to do, okay? It was all part of the deal going on the Swerve Talk Network. Promote the hell out of it. So I'm doing it. Swerve Talk Network each and every week with the guys, man. You will not be disappointed. I can't stress this enough. You will not be disappointed of the quality podcasting that is on that network. Go and check it out each and every week. Also... This podcast is also on Wrestling Matters channel, which is AJW Wrestling Matters on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. Also, download this podcast for free on the wrestling, on the SoundCloud, which is SoundCloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast. Take it anywhere you want, whatever it is you got to do. Just listen and enjoy the great wrestling podcast that is the Wrestling Matters podcast, where wrestling matters, ladies and gentlemen, good or bad. Also... Shout out to my partners, OSW TV, the Raging Falcon, RFW Network, and the list goes on and on. You know who you are. Salute to you all. Also, big shout out, of course. I can't. I always do this each and every week as well. Mystery Island. You know I love you guys. 56 to 58, Oxton Road, Birkenhead in Liverpool, Merseyside area. Get yourself over there if you're in the area. That will be the first thing I'll do if I'm ever in Liverpool or... Everton or whatever that's Merseyside indeed so get yourself over there check them out for more information on that shop plus their wrestling uh, promotion as well Wrestle Island also look out for that as well for more information on it of course facebook.com forward slash back to the island give it a little like 
and you'll be kept up to date with all the information as well of who's coming and who's going and what else is going to be taking place at that great facility. Now, I've got all the promotions out the way, ladies and gentlemen. Like I say, TLC, Raw and SmackDown is still to come. But I want to talk about two things, two major things that came up today. This is recorded on the 8th of December as well. This will go out on Monday. This is recorded on the 8th of December. This will go out on Monday, the 12th of December. This should be out right now. So when you're listening to this, this should be the 12th of December. Uh, yeah, I've got two stories that came today. 1993, ladies and gentlemen, in the 1993 Royal Rumble, we all know we got Bret Hart versus Scott Hall for the then WWF Championship. But, word has it, from what I got today, that uh, there was talk about it being... Bret Hart versus the Ultimate Warrior. Yes, the same psychopath that held up money and all that stuff. But he's still a legend nonetheless. Now, I listened to this little audio. Like I said, the two audio, the two video, the two main topics I'm going to talk about, I'll drop a link in the description below for you to check them out. I heard about this, and I listened to it today. And like I said, I only just got it today. And... I agree with Solo Monsters. It was all part of Solo Monsters' uh, podcast, which was on TV Trax's channel, YouTube channel. Check that out as well. Apparently, Bret Hart said that the warrior was meant to put him over at that point. There was talks about it happening, and the warrior was meant to put him over. Now, I agree with Solo Monster. Considering the state that the Ultimate Warrior was in back then, fame. I disagree. I can't see the warrior agreeing to that. To be honest with you, I mean, what's right. your take on this? I, I mean, Bret Bret Hart has uh, has joined these uh, the wrestling legends like Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, who make up stories about the past, about things that nobody really cares about. It's not yeah. like wrestling would have been revolutionized if the Ultimate Warrior put over Bret Hart. All right, to be honest with you. I don't really care that much for Bret Hart. I never really did. Yeah, he can wrestle or whatever, but the fact that he was against the Attitude Era, and I feel like, you know, Bret screwed Bret. He should have gave up the title in Montreal. I don't care how much you don't like Shawn Michaels. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It, that's all hearsay. And, and, and But, but my, my point is, we let Ric Flair slide when he says things like he banged Halle Berry, right? We let Hulk Hogan slide when he said, like, I don't know. Somebody was going to give him like a hundred million dollars to do something stupid. I don't know. He, Hulk Hogan has so many. You know what I mean? And it's just like he's. We all respect Bret Hart because he could wrestle and he was the excellence of execution and his family's well respected and everything like that. Uh, you know, hashtag Owen is better. But it, it's it's time for us to give him the same pass that we give to Ric Flair, that we give to Hulk Hogan. Just, yes, of course, Ultimate Warrior is going to put you over. Of course, Bret Hart. Yes. Okay, sit down. Before you have another stroke, go on, sit down, sit down, Mr. Hart. Like, you just let him, let him go, leave him alone, man. Is, is it news when an old man runs his mouth? What did he say about Triple H? Triple H never had a match that was four, over, out, over four out of ten. Okay, Hart. Yeah. And what do you say about Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins is dangerous. He needs to get taken off because he's hurting people on purpose. Like, yo, fuck out my face, Bret Hart. Okay, Grandpa, no problem. We'll take care of Seth Rollins. Just sit down. Yeah, I love me some Bret Hart. Don't get me wrong. I grew up on Bret. He's had so many great matches. One of my favorite matches he's had was him and Mr. Perfect in 91. At uh, the 91 SummerSlam, that was great and everything. But it, it has got to the point right now where I agree with you, Fame, about Bret. He says things that, A, no one gives a flying fuck about, as you correctly said. But it's the way he comes across as well. I mean, Triple H, 4 out of 10. What is he, the 100th, the 1,000-time world champion now? Is he, he was a good wrestler, not a great wrestler. Look, say what you want about Triple H. Triple H is Triple H, but at the end of the day, at least he knows wrestling. At the end of the day, I mean, look at NXT. But at the end of the day, what you said, Brett, was a little harsh, in my opinion. Don't get me started on the Seth Rollins bit. I mean, I don't know where that came from. And also that hurt Seth Rollins' feelings. Because Seth was a fan of Brett, and then he hears that about him. And, you know, questions start to get asked and everything. And, and you're right, he has gone into the point where 
it's like a grandpa mode, but you can, I mean, like, with, like you correctly said with Ric Flair, Ric Flair dreaming, I guess, about sleeping with Halle Berry, but that's Ric Flair. You can give him a pass for that. You know, he's the nature right. boy. He's Slick Rick. To be fair, it wouldn't be surprising if he actually got closer to Halle Berry, to be honest, but that's another, like I said, that's another debate for another day. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, but like I say, it is Ric Flair. You can give him a pass for that. Right. Brett, it's like watching a TV show that we have over here called Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> we had we had, a, we had a TV show over here called Grumpy Old Men, which was grumpy celebrities just moaning about certain things in life and society. And that's what it's like sometimes when you listen to Bret Hart as well. Like I say, I love me some Bret. Don't get me wrong, I love me some Brett, and I always will. But some of the stuff that comes out of his mouth, like Fame says, is questionable. You know, yeah, and, and it's like get the and it's like Fame correctly says, it's like get the fuck out of here, you know, kind of thing. Because you don't want to believe it, and most of the time it's full of shit. Not saying that Brett's you know a liar or anything, but you know, it's just what's that? I, yeah, I, I I don't think he's a liar. I think he believes the things that he is saying. Yeah, he believes his own bullshit. I suppose. I suppose we can say that. Yeah, he believes his own yeah. bullshit there. I like that. Yeah. Right. Another th topic that came up, ladies and gents. Batista and Evolution. Now, don't get me wrong, Evolution was awesome. I used to call them the uh, Four Horsemen of the Millennium. And I still do to this very day. But, for you people that don't know, Batista wasn't meant to be a part of that. Oh, he wasn't in the first, you know, the top idea for him to be a part of that. And Triple H has even said this on the DVD, on his DVD. That role was meant to be for Mark Gingrak. But, my question to you is, did WWE make the right choice? And did they benefit more with Batista? Or do you think... Maybe Ginger was, you know, the right would have been the right choice for it. What's your take on it? I mean, let me tell you why Batista was the right choice right here. I'm telling you right now. Shoot. Because when Ginger left the WWE, we never heard of him again. Now, we could really have a back and forth debate if Ginger had left, gone to TNA, and made himself a star. All right. And we, we could have had this talk if he went to New Japan and made himself a star, won himself a couple titles. We could be like, yo, Jindrak might have been better than Batista in Evolution. But the fact of the matter is this. Batista took it as far as it could possibly go. Even now, even though he's not in the WWE, he's still associated with it. And now he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, which is one of the biggest movies. And it's going to be, you know, you know it's going to be another one. And you know they're going to be in the Avengers. So you know at least he's going to have more appearances, uh, you know, and that connects it. And he was just promoting a movie when he was in Evolution 2.0, you know, with the Blue Tista and all this. You know what I mean? So it, it's it was definitely the right move because I don't think anyone named Jindrak would have been able to do any of that. All right, like Jindrak is not a marketable name like Batista. Yeah. Like I, I, I mean, there's so many reasons why. Yes, WWE, you made the right call. Yeah, and you have to think as well. You know, based on you know pay per view buys as well. I mean, you look at the match that Batista eventually ended up having with Triple H at WrestleMania, and you know, and apparently that WrestleMania or that match, you know, that match a part of that WrestleMania drew over a million pay per view buys. You know, and you have to think, or, or imagine at least, if Drindrak was in that position, would you, you know? Would you think, or would we have got the million pay-per-view buys for that match at the most? Or would we have got a good rating in that match as the Batista Triple H one did? I think no, to be honest, because I like... Look, I think Jindrek is a good wrestler. Is he a caliber of a main eventer? No, he's not a main event no. player. Not a main event player, in my opinion. Um, he is a... It could be a great mid-card wrestler. And like you correctly say, when he left the WWE, I think the closest thing we ever got, you know, I think he ended up going to, uh, I think he ended up going to Mexico at some point. That was the last time I heard, the, the, that was the last place I heard he went. But like you correctly say, we never heard from him again. 
You know, he, yeah, he, he was like he didn't. He, he was like he didn't exist anymore. And him, he, could he have went to TNA, and made himself a better star? Yeah, back then. Don't know if you'd want to do that now, like considering the state TNA is in. You know, and and I don't think Japan was doing the business that they're doing now back then. But could he have went to Japan and make himself a star? Probably. Yeah, because you know, anybody can. It, it seems that anybody in a way, can get over in Japan. I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of guys, don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of talented guys, like an AJ Styles, for example, that have went to Japan and got over. Why? Because they're fucking talented. And they are main event players. But also, mid-carders can get over like main eventers in Japan. I mean, one time, I believe, Albert, Lord Tenzai, was over in Japan. Oh, and yeah. Then, and then he came to WWE, and, well, we all know what happened there. This big, huge, undefeated streak, and then he walks right into John Cena, and then it's back to mid-card. So, yeah. But, like I say, if it could work for a guy like Tenzai, it would probably work for Jindrak. But like, but like you correctly say, the minute Jindrak left, we never heard from him again. So, I think it's safe to say, to put a bottom line on this, Batista was the right call. Oh, yeah. And plus he had the look, too. Yeah. He had that monster look. Which is probably, I don't even remember what Jin Zack looks like. So. Yeah. Uh, look, Jin Zack was in good shape, don't get me wrong, but Batista, Jesus Christ. Fucking, right. Especially at that time, too. Yeah. That bouncers would have been happy to have him on their fucking doors, let me tell you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> clubs, nightclubs and shit like that would have been fucking overjoyed to have a guy like him on the fucking doors, let me tell you. That I, would, that I can assure you. And even, I went to Newcastle once to watch WWE SmackDown and Batista was in the main event and even my brother was impressed with him. <laughs> and even he turned around and went to me because my, my brother's a doorman himself and even he turned around and to me, it went to me. I would love to have had him. You know, the club that he works for or he used to work for, we would have loved to have had him on the doors back then. So, and plus, if he was on the doors back then, Batista, guarantee you no one would have fucked with him. They would, have, they would have been his best mates or anything like that, but that was then. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. I've also come up with this other thing as well. Now, we all know The Undertaker returned. 900th episode of SmackDown. But apparently, he has been caught on camera, or somebody took a photo of him carrying an injury. Because it seems The Undertaker is injured. Now, the whole plan was, now that AJ Styles is still the champion... AJ Styles, Undertaker, Royal Rumble. All leading into a match at WrestleMania involving The Undertaker and John Cena. Undertaker being the champion, dropping it to John Cena, and yes, John Cena is the 16-time world champion. Now, it seems that is up and all as well, but it seems that John Cena is going to be out of WWE for, for most of 2017 due to yeah. movie deals and television deals as well. I mean, he's already hosting Saturday Night Live. And he seems to be going to be having commitments outside of WWE in 2017. So that leaves this proposed match for WrestleMania, or this proposed idea to go into WrestleMania, up in air. Now, I've said my stuff about John Cena, but Fame, what is your... Where do you stand with John Cena, I mean, are you a hater? Do you criticize him about the Make a Wish, like most other people do? I mean, where do you stand with John Cena? Where do you stand with Mr. Hustle loyalty and respect? Okay, all right. Listen, number one, <clears throat> um, people's people really argue down when they try to say like turn Cena heel, and they try to say like, oh, Cena's not that important. Uh, he shouldn't have been a 15 time champion because of his wrestling ability. Because blah blah blah. And people say Make a Wish, and they're like, oh, anybody could have done Make a Wish. One. No, not anybody could have done Make a Wish. First of all, first of all, think of think of the the toll on your soul. You have to be around dying children. Not sick children might get better. They're dying. They're dying so bad and so rapidly. They were like, anything you want, Make a Wish. You understand? Yeah. So and John Cena has done over three hundred. That's three hundred dying children. And, you know, it was, I, I, I bet someone were like two or three at a time. You know what I mean? So, uh, but, but other than that, um, I went through a phase 
where I was like John Cena is like where he was you know when it was like five moves of doom John Cena I was like I hate this guy he buried the Nexus blah 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 smart stuff smart stuff whatever but now I see like all right well you know that was bad and it could have been bigger but whatever like it happened you can't change it and two John Cena is still on the rise from stuff like that like it worked out because John Cena was able to take all that momentum from being able to do stuff like crush the Nexus and use it to elevate the U.S. title. Because you know that John Cena is the man. Like you know, it's hard to beat John Cena. You know that. So, so, and all in all, John Cena is the coolest man. Like he's he's bomb, man. There's no like he he's a cool guy. He's an he's a great ambassador. He has great charisma. That's why he's good on Total Divas. That's why he's good at hosting the ESPYS. That's why he's good in that Amy Schumer movie. Like John Cena is all over the place. He's hosting shows. He's very uh, motivational. He's very inspirational. Like John Cena is the man all over. He might not be the greatest wrestler, but for the entertainer, for the man that he is, he is top dog. He's definitely earned that spot. He's earned those 15 titles because of what he's done for the company. Because, you know, I don't know if people know this, but, you know, wrestling's WWE. I'm sorry. WWE's main objective is to make money, not produce good wrestling. They just happen to coincide at times. So. And that's just that's just you know that's just my opinion on John Cena. I think he's the man. I don't think that plan is going to happen about Undertaker and uh, you know AJ Styles and all all that stuff. But it'd be nice. It, it makes too much sense. Yeah, I mean John Cena. Look, I've said my piece about John Cena. <laughs> you know, I, look, am I going to sit here and say that I'm a fan of John Cena? Yeah, because I am. I, I'll give him his due. And like you correctly say, it is hard to be around dying children. So I think John Cena should be saluted for the stuff that he does with the Make-A-Wish, despite what you haters out there say. But, I mean, I've criticized John Cena on many occasions about his rumor politicking backstage. I mean, one example, his girlfriend, Nikki Bella, becoming the longest reigning Divas champion. Apparently... That was meant to happen. And, you know, this was all leading to where Charlotte eventually won the belt. And apparently the reason why she became... Actually, there was two reasons. One was probably true and the other one wasn't. The other one, the one that wasn't true, that was pro probably wasn't true, it was just a rumour. That was John Cena said, log him backstage for her to get that nod. The other one that was probably true was the reason why the other reason why Nikki Bella became the longest reigning Divas champion because they were trying to erase AJ Lee from it. But at the end of the day, you can't fault John Cena for what he's done. You can't fault him for it. I mean, th that but, but, but let's but let's let's take let's take a let's take a pause, right? All right. Let me just take a pause. Let's let's just say, for example, that that's true. That he was like, hey, I want my girl to be the longest reigning Divas champion. Yeah. Have you seen Nikki Bella? Yeah. Yeah, I've... If, you know, like, now, let's... let's like, Nikki Bella's your girlfriend, right? Yeah. She's, she's laying in your bed with you. She lives with you, right? And she's like, I really like this belt. I really like being champion. I wish I could be the longest reigning Divas champion. Yeah. And you can do that. For Nikki Bella. For a girl that looks like Nikki Bella and acts like Nikki Bella. And if you watch Total Divas, she loves to sleep with John Cena. She likes to, like, pick up new nasty things to do to John Cena. I'm jealous of the sex life of Nikki Bella and John Cena. So, I would make that call. Yeah. I agree. I, I totally agree. I, it's, hard, it's hard not to deny it. Um, maybe because I was really pulling for uh, Charlotte back in the day. But now you brought that up, I never thought of it that way. And you got, like we gotta, we got like we gotta remember, we gotta break the kayfabe ourselves sometimes. Like these are real human beings. Yeah. At the end of the day, like Nikki Bella, oh my god, oh my god, no. If Nikki Bella asked me to make a call, try to see if she can be the longest reigning Divas champion, I'd be trying to call everybody I know. Man, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I did just, just yeah. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. To be honest, I never thought of it that way. Now you bring that up, but yeah, I mean. I mean, I mean, the only reason I ask that is because of, you know, what's your take on John? I mean, John is going around shooting his mouth off, you know, supposedly, that's what you haters would probably say, about the fact that he's whinging about, you know, there's rumor that he's whinging about the payday that Brock Lesnar got and uh, Goldberg got for the Survivor Series match. 
and even though he's getting paid, he gets paid more than they do. Um, and also, there's rumors about him not seeing eye to eye with WWE and everything, you know, and that. And I only say that as well because of what happened with him and The Rock. Because, I mean, do you think this makes him a hypocrite? I mean, say your piece on this as well. I mean, do you think your this makes him a hypocrite because of what? I mean, oh. back in the day with Rock. The Rock was doing right. movies, he was doing seven years away and this, that and the other, and he comes back and beats a part-time and says, he's back and he's back for the fans and everything. And that's what started the whole John Cena fiasco with him leading into WrestleMania. You know, John Cena was criticizing him. You're not back, you've been making movies and shit like that. I've been here for 12 years busting my ass and this, this and this. I mean, put a bottom line on this fame. Do you think John Cena's a hypocrite? I don't. I don't think he's a hypocrite. I'll tell you why. Um, when he was calling The Rock out about how he said, you know, he love he loves doing this, he loves being in the in the company, he loves wrestling or whatever like that, and then he left the company, and then he it, he did it he did it for The Rock, you know what I mean? Like he did it for himself. Right. Like right. Rock left the company. John Cena is still with the company, so <coughs> anything that he does is for company. Um. When he appears on a D- on a TV show, it says WWE superstar John Cena. Like, it reminds you where he is. Like, they don't do that with The Rock because they can't because he doesn't work for the company. You know what I mean? So, everywhere that John Cena is, it is a, the WWE is branded on him. Plus, he's he's the guy. He's the guy that people know wrestle even if they don't watch wrestling. So, the difference between him and The Rock is The Rock did it for The Rock, and and John Cena is still doing it for company until he leaves the company. Now, if John Cena leaves the company and then comes back and starts wrestling, and, and like, I'll be like, oh, hey, you did exactly what The Rock did. I mean, I start making movies. I'll be like, oh, okay, you did exactly what The Rock did, and maybe you are a hypocrite. But maybe he learned why The Rock did it. Maybe the WWE is not very understanding about things like that, even though they're growing to be, letting him host the ESPYs, letting him be in that Amy Schumer movie, um, you know, all that other stuff. But letting him host SNL. That's the Saturday. Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I guess we've said what we've said, ladies and gentlemen, and I guess we'll end this part here. Uh, that was part one of the Wrestling Matters podcast. We'll be back in part two with our review and our thoughts and opinions on TLC. That's right. It was a good pay-per-view. Was it a great pay-per-view? Did, was there any good points? Was there any boring points? Yeah. Yeah? We'll find out after this. Stay tuned, guys. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show you support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two. I'm here with Fame Black and we're back for part two of the Wrestling Matters podcast. And now it's time, ladies and gentlemen... 4th of December, TLC Review. That's right, WWE TLC Review on the network. And, uh, yeah, it was okay. There was one awesome part about the ne- about this pay-per-view. But, uh, yeah, I really... It was kind of okay, to be honest. There was one awesome part of this pay-per-view and one part that I knew was going to fucking happen that I called with Michael Larkin last week but I'll go through the quick hits before we get to our opinions on it Apollo Crews Alpha, American Alpha rather I was about to say Alpha female, Alpha male there for some reason Apollo Crews, American Ooh, Alpha and Hype Bros defeat Kurt Hawkins Vaud Villains and the Ascension on the pre-show Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt defeated the Sma- uh, SmackDown, the then SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Heath Slater and Rhino. And yes, we have new World Tag, we have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and the Wyatts and Bray Wyatt in particular has a title, ladies and gentlemen. Thank fuck for that. I'll get to that in a second. Nikki Bella beats Carmella in a no disqualification match. Miz retains the Intercontinental Championship in what was a fucking awesome ladder match, I have to say, against Dolph Ziggler. Thanks to his misses. Baron Corbin beats a game Kalisto in a chairs match. Kalisto didn't have to take it to him. And 
a match that even though I predicted that Becky Lynch would win, I had a funny feeling she'd win, and she did it. Alexa Bliss is now your SmackDown Women's Champion. And yes, WWE World Champion AJ Styles retained his title against Dean Ambrose in a tables, ladders, and chairs match thanks to one pain in the corporate ass, pain in the ass himself, <laughs> James Ellsworth. And I yes, love James Ellsworth, man. I fucking... I said, we, we, me and Michael Larkin said last week on the podcast that this was going to happen. There was a possibility that this would happen. And what the fuck happens? It happened. So we'll get to that in a second. I want to talk about my favorite part of the night. My okay. favorite part of the night. Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And from what I got yesterday, it seems that they've enabled the Freebird rule. So not yes. only are the Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt the tag team champions, Luke Harper is too. So now we have three birds on SmackDown, which is the Wyatt family, basically. At the end of the day, I don't know where you stand on this. What is What was your favorite moment? What was your good points, bad points, fucked up points, shit points, retarded points about TLC? Mine was Bray Wyatt because I'm just happy that motherfucker's got a title. <laughs> um, he's not gonna need it when he becomes you know when he becomes WWE champion uh, when he beats AJ Styles. But but then and you know that'll be cool. But then Randy Orton will turn on him and that'll be his first defense. But yeah, but 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 more more importantly, focus it on the present. Um, you know I love Bray Wyatt, man, and, but and that was good for me to watch him win. And then the way they set it up with the with the crab walk to the RKO, that was really pretty. And um. My favorite moment of the night, though, was Miz being the Miz and me and Dolph Ziggler in the nuts yeah. to win. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's exact. I was thinking, I was like, you should just fucking kick him in the balls, yo. He'll fall, like, immediately. Like, oh, you don't need him to be knocked out. You just need him to fall. Just kick him in the nuts. It was so good. It was hilarious. It was the best moment of the night. Would you agree? Um, Would you agree that ladder match was match of the night? I would agree. Yeah, I I, I was in, and I was invested in the whole thing, man, because I like the Miz a lot. I've been a day one Miz supporter. I think that the Miz is the true James Ellsworth. He's the person that proves that anybody could be a professional wrestler. Like the man came from reality TV and shitty reality TV at that. No, I love me. Look, do I hate the Miz? Am I the biggest fan? No, I'm not. Do I respect the Miz? Yeah, because whether you like it or not, he can get it done in the ring. They the don't. Miz is probably the most believable character in wrestling today. Like, you can believe if if somebody said that the Miz is really like that, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. I mean, that that's what makes him great. I suppose. I mean, like I say, this this he had an unbelievable match with Dolph at the at the pay per view. Man, I mean, where do you see him going now with this Intercontinental Championship? Because there's rumors now he's going to be feuding with. Dean Ambrose for it. I mean, where right. you, if you were SmackDown's booker or a creative member of the creative team on SmackDown and you had the Miz and you had the direction with him as the Intercontinental Champion now, granted there's no like great depth on the WWE roster at this moment in time at least. Hopefully they'll be still working on that. From what I got, but if you had the Miz at your expo at your exposure right in front of you, and you said, but and somebody came up to you and said, book him, book his next feud, book the next direction for the Miz as in the Cardinal Champion, oh. what would you do? Oh man, see, like I'm I'm all about like especially because I like the Miz, so this is definitely in his favor. Like I'm he when he calls it the Miz's never ending intercontinental title reunion tour. Cause he just got the belt back. Okay. So it's never ending. So let's build it up. Let's like, all right, let's give some credibility to what you're saying. So the, you're going to need some jobbers. They're like, all right, Kurt Hawkins challenge for the intercontinental title. Miz make short work of him. Um, Kalisto challenge for the title. All right. He's a little tricky. He's a little, he's a little faster. It's a little more difficult. He'll beat Kalisto. Um, who else? I mean, Mania, you got to have some. By Mania, you got to have somebody. So Miz is just one in and done in. Like, boom, bang. I defended that on SmackDown. Boom, whatever the next uh, SmackDown pay-per-view is. Boom, defend one at the Rumble. Defend one in February. Like, 
it, you know, it, maybe de- maybe defend two in February, one in the first week, one on the pay per view. Like, but it, it's one and done. These feuds are one and done. Like he he does. Um, let's say he does Kurt Hawkins. He does Kalisto. He'll do uh, who else is on the losing side? Um, Apollo Cruz. Yeah, he did Apollo Cruz already though. But that was on the first tour, not the reunion tour. Yeah. So you can see him on the tail side. People fo- people will have forgotten because that was a one and done. Um. Mm, give me, give me somebody else from SmackDown. It's about, difficult. Jack Swagger, he can, he can knock out Jack Swagger. Yeah. yeah. How about you just, uh, how about just throw Dean Ambrose in there for the hell of it. Right. Well, what I'm saying, like, we can take it. We, yeah, we can take it to Dean Ambrose being the the guy to take it from him, or at least the real first big challenge right around Mania time. Yeah. Or you can have, you can step it up and have one of the Wyatt challenge, like Luke Harper can challenge. Like that's that's like more intimidating. You got Baron Corbin challenge. Probably give it to him in that sense. Yeah. But you got Baron Corbin challenge. But if the Miz can get past Baron Corbin, the Miz might turn face accidentally. So, you yeah. know. That's where you have to be careful, and I suppose. People people do want to cheer for the Miz. You remember on SmackDown when he gave Dean Ambrose the, the Miz Participation Award, which I love. Oh, and by the way, every time he beats these one and dones, he gives them a Miz Participation Award. Yeah. That's yeah. that's totally going to run. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when he did it, people were chanting, you deserve it, at Dean Ambrose. And it's just like... Not that they felt bad about Dean Ambrose, they just loved it. They just loved the whole the bit that he yeah. was doing. Yeah, it, 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 it's amazing he didn't do. Uh, it's amazing he didn't give one to the uh, Daniel Bryan. I mean, I'd like to say we'll talk about this more later on when we talk about Raw SmackDown as well. But he also seems to be doing Daniel Bryan's moves. Oh yeah, well. he did the face. He does the he does the drop kicks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he also seems to be doing that. But what pissed me off about about TLC is I happened to watch uh, Talking Smack right after TLC as well. I managed to get a good glimpse because I was still up, even though I watched TLC and you know and shit like that and everything. I was still up. Yeah, I was I was up watching TLC and then I managed to thought, oh, you know what? Let's you know fuck it. I watched TLC. Let's watch Talking Smack. And this past week on Talking Smack after TLC. It had Daniel Bryan in the Miz round two, so to speak, with their. Uh, you remember the first time when Miz just oh, yeah. totally fucking ripped him apart for calling oh, yes. him lazy and everything and, and all that. Well, round two happened on Talking Smack this past week, and after right after the pay per view, and it seemed that this time Daniel Bryan fought back. But what pissed me off is they cut it off halfway through, and we didn't get to see the finish. Fucking WWE. No, no they, they, they had the whole argument, the back and forth argument. They had Alexa Bliss on. And by the way, she cut a fucking great promo <laughs> on, to, on the Talking Smack after TLC, man. She cut a great promo. Um, she's now the women's champion. She came on crying and saying, this means a lot to me and everything like that. And as soon as Renee Young said, but you have to give credit to Becky Lynch, she was like, no. Oh no! Why we are? Why are we doing that? No, why are we doing that? Oh, <laughs> it was fucking great. All the sub story and all the subbiness that came out of her eyes, and then she just write, "What the fuck? I'm not giving anybody credit for this. The only person who I deserve this and this, that, and the other, which is fucking great. If you haven't seen it, guys, go back and watch it. It was just superb, superbly. <laughs> she done. said, "I should have had that back in Glasgow." Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was just fucking great, man. It was just beautifully done. But yeah, they cut the fuck argument I was enjoying the argument because this time unlike the first time where Miz just totally ripped him apart Daniel Bryan fought back this time he didn't walk off he just went at it they went at it face to face yes Renee Young was trying to get involved again like she did the first time round but you know it didn't pay off but WWE cut it off and finished the show right there and then which pissed me the fuck off because I wanted to see the ending I wanted to see how it panned out but you know, we obviously couldn't do it. I haven't been on WWE's YouTube channel yet, so I don't know if they've got any, like, any exclusive footage of that yet. So maybe they just ended it on there. I don't know. But I'll have to check that out in, in right. due course. But, yeah, it, it happened round two on there. But, like I say, it pissed me off when they cut it off early. Speaking of Alexa Bliss, where do you see her going now? She's the women's champion. Um, Becky gets a rematch, right? Yeah, of course. Becky gets that rematch. Uh, and then uh, she's going to have to take on Big Body. She's going to have to take on Natalia, who's trying to 
who's going to wrap up her thing with uh, Nikki Bella right around the time that this is over. Yeah. And she and she's kind of in there, you know what I mean? Like Carmella's in there too, so it could all appear up. Yeah, Nikki Bella, it, I think. Yeah, it's, it's Nikki Bella or Natalia. Yeah, it's a it's a good thing you brought that up. Actually, this little angle they've got, they seem to have got now. Who would attack Nikki Bella at Survivor Series? Do you think that's predictable? Because if you think about it, you've got Nikki Bella, who was the team captain. You've got her blaming Carmella because she's feuding with Carmella, and Carmella's been nothing but a pain in her ass since she came back to WWE and and joined SmackDown. She's been, basically Carmella's turned heel and been nothing but a pain in her ass. But everybody seems to be pointing the finger at Natalia. And Natalia had a reason to attack Nikki Bella if it was her because Nikki defeated Natalia to become the captain in the first place. Right. I mean, do you think this is fucking predictable? Do you all think they're going to know? Or do you think WWE are going to swerve it and bring out somebody else? I mean, you never know. Like it's Natalia's. <clears throat> Natalia's a delicate character, man. She, she. I'm really not sure where her allegiance lies. So, for her, you know, to turn on Nikki, maybe. But it also, yeah, I also like the idea of it still being Carmelo all along. Like, I don't know. It, 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 it's hard to, it's hard to get a grip of that one, isn't it? Right. So that's why I say no. I wouldn't call it predictable. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to get a grip of it. Um. And yes, we have to talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. WWE World Champion AJ Styles retains from Dean Ambrose. He is still the WWE World Champion, thanks to one James Ellsworth. Yeah. Like I said last week on the podcast, talking to Michael Larkin, Michael Larkin brought this up. There was a possibility of this happening, and it happened. And... I heard you say when I was explaining this, you actually are a James Ellsworth fan. So the floor is yours. Yeah. What did you think of this? You know, man, I love that guy. Like he doesn't even know that he turned heel. Like he, <laughs> he's like, did you hear his explanation on Talking Smack? Yeah, yeah, he, he actually, was like, yeah, he's like, listen, I got AJ Styles' number, and he's like, so he's like, Dean will understand. I'll give him a title shot. He'll be the first guy I give a title shot to. <laughs> Yeah. Like, he's so stupid. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, obviously, obviously, somebody didn't give him the memo of what a heel and a baby face is. Oh, my God. This shit was so funny. He's like, yeah, I got AJ Styles' number. But he was like, me and Dean go way back. Like, yo, that he's about to kill you, man. Like, what are you, don't mess with Dean Ambrose. Yeah. So it was just like, it was so funny to watch him be that way. Because I don't watch wrestling. Like, like people get excited about these wins and losses and shit, right? And I I can't. I watch it more like I watch Dragon Ball Z. Um, be, I wa- and and what I mean by this is like different characters are good for different storylines of different like their power level and if they can win or lose is based upon like if the story will allow for it. Right. So I don't try to get behind a wrestler and be like they should deserve a push because of this that and third. I gotta go for where the story go, you know. Yeah. So like. On like that, and that's why it's like funny to me that people are like, oh my god, AJ Styles is getting buried because he's losing to James Ellsworth. No, we all know that James Ellsworth cannot beat AJ Styles. We know that, right. but it's funny to see the table get turned on him. That's why it's entertaining because we all know that that this would normally be impossible. Does it make AJ Styles any less of a great wrestler? Absolutely not. Does it make him any less of a? Did it, did it make the TLC match with Dean Ambrose any less good? No. Like, the match was over. They did all the spots. They did all the wrestling. It was brutal. Of course. Now it's over. Now it's time for the storyline to kick in, where James Ellsworth comes in. Oh, why can't we get a clean finish? Because there's nothing cool about that. Now you got to see James Ellsworth do the thing. Like, it was a whole bit. Like, of course, you couldn't just close out with him never showing up again. Yeah. It was just... (laughs) He he won a contract and a title opportunity, so you knew he was going to be around. Yeah. He's part of the story. Yeah, he's part of SmackDown now. Whether we like it or not, he's a part of SmackDown. He's part of the story. He is, and now we're going to end up seeing Dean Ambrose one on one. We'll probably see the death of James Ellsworth because we've got now we're going to have this match now with Dean Ambrose apparently one on one with James Ellsworth. No doubt, probably either a SmackDown show. Or I'm guessing they're plugging it for the Royal Rumble, I suppose. But 
Like, no, it might even be like, like, could you not see them having the match Dean going in, getting all this violence in, and AJ Styles coming out to help James Ellsworth? And Maybe. now, not only is James Ellsworth like what four and zero. Oh, but it's against AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose. Yeah. Like I said, maybe it could possibly happen. Like I said, we don't know where the match is yet. Like I said, my guess is for the Royal Rumble match. Uh, but like I said, we'll have to uh, figure that out and find out when that's going to take place. But uh, yeah, it could possibly happen. AJ Styles could probably come out. Heck, we might even get it at the rate you're sounding uh, their fame. We may even get a triple threat match. Dean Ambrose, James Ellsworth, AJ Styles for the, for the WWE title. World. Yeah, exactly for the WWE World Title. James Ellsworth, yo, AJ Styles, and Dean Ambrose. James Ellsworth, yo, like who would have thought that that guy would be in the main event of anything? Yeah, that's why it's probably going to end up happening. It wouldn't surprise me that if that's the direction I'm they're going to take. I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm. Yeah. I'm not against it. It would make sense for it to go that way. I can tell you that. But anyway, what was your overall? Uh, rating an overall final thought and review of TLC in general. Um, I say I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it an eight. I'll give it a solid eight. Do you think? You know it, do you think? It, you know what that really <laughs> impressed me though. You know, what, I'll tell you what really impressed me, and it wasn't even something that like the wrestlers did or anything like that. What really impressed me was the fact that um, I was afraid that they were going to be embarrassed during the tables match, uh, because Alexa Bliss, and I thought she was going to lose, uh, is the smallest active wrestler on the roster. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, unless you got gravity helping you, I think it's difficult to put somebody through a table. Just just for example, Randy Orton's 250 pounds, and it's hard, and he doesn't always RKO through the table correctly. Right. So I was, I was like, I don't want the Divas to be, well, I don't want the women to be embarrassed. When this happens, because if this, if they fuck up the finish because the table doesn't break, it's going to look like a real, like, people are going to be like, oh, this is what we were talking about. Like, women can't do it like men. And I was like, I don't want that to be the case. I don't want anybody to have an arguing point like that. So I was very proud that the table broke, and it broke, like, heavy. It broke with defiance. You could hear it, like, bow. It was great. Yeah. One quick, uh, before I end this part here, one quick uh, little thing that I must bring up. As we all know, it's Royal Rumble, you know, Royal Rumble in January, then Fastlane in February. Apparently, uh, Elimination Chamber's coming back. The Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Now, yeah. whether it'll be coming back as, you know, whether the WWE, because there's rumors the WWE are going to cut down the pay-per-views in 2017. So, there might not be two a month. They go, might go back to one a month. Um but it seems that SmackDown, uh, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, which is coming back, is a SmackDown show. Ooh. Does that mean that Raw is going to win the Royal Rumble match and go to WrestleMania? Or, you know, are they, are they building it that way? I mean, what do you think of this? I've heard rumors of, like, 40-man Royal Rumble, but it's like 30, you can do 30, 15, SmackDown, Smith, 15, Raw, and whoever the superstar is, their brand gets the main event, the the event, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. you have to book it that way. That, and that makes the most sense, and that's the, you don't, have, you don't have to do any editing for that, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to change anything. But, but yeah, but going back to earlier on, I mean, there was a lot of talk about them wanting to make the Universal title legit. I mean, there was talk about Brock Lesnar challenging for it at the Royal Rumble match, uh, right. at the Royal Rumble pay per view as well. But now he's in the Royal Rumble, and so is Goldberg, you know. And it seems it's it's going to go down to Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania and whatever, you know. Maybe they're doing this to establish and make, you know, the Universal Title a player. Because let's face it, the Universal Title has only been around about six months at the most, hasn't it? So. Maybe they're finding ways to do that. I mean, do you think that's a good move? Or, you know, would you rather see, you know, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view be there instead of Fastlane and have both SmackDown versus Raw on it and have them competing for their titles depending on who wins the Royal Rumble? Of course. Now, see, because then you got... 
then you got three pay per views in a row that's mixing the brands. Yeah. If SmackDown is gonna have Elimination Chamber, I don't think it should be in February unless unless their main event unless the, if the winner of the Royal Rumble is from Raw and the main event of WrestleMania is going to be Raw then SmackDown can have their elimination chamber in February but you can't run that every year yeah maybe the, yeah yeah that 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 I actually thinking about it yeah whoever wins the Royal Rumble not only goes to WrestleMania but the loser gets a pay-per-view in February yeah yeah, you know, so SmackDown can get the Elimination Chamber, and if SmackDown wins the Royal Rumble, Raw gets Fastlane. Right, there you yeah. go. Yeah, there you go. Right, that was fun. That was well, TLC. Like, yeah, I'm thinking about it more. It's like February February is that time where you know that the belt's not going to change hands, not really, because you, you've already sold a main event for yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, but it's about setting up. It's about usually February's round about this time back in the day of the original brand extension. They would set up, you know, the February. All right, say if I don't know Roman Reigns was on Raw and he won the Royal Rumble, he would go to WrestleMania to fight for the Universal Title. And usually they would use the February pay per view for the other brand to set up their match for WrestleMania right. as well. Because you can't, you can't have too many Royal Rumbles, can you? Unless, unless right. they do, unless they do it on the uh, SmackDown show, like they do. That's what they should do, man. Bring the Royal Rumble on TV, like they did, like they did back in the day, which set up Eddie Guerrero and Brock Lesnar in No Way Out. Right. When, when Eddie won the title, and that, that led to Eddie versus Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 20. That's what they should do, man. You know, even do it that way as well. If you're not going to have like. You know, say Raw wins the pay per view, wins the Royal Rumble, and that. You know, it's not necessary to have a pay per view in February. All right, it probably would if it's you know if you want to draw money and draw pay per view buyers and whatever. You know, but why not have that? You know, all right, Raw's won the Royal Rumble. Why not have a a a, a little Royal Rumble? Oh, you don't have to have a thirty man. Have a fifteen man Royal Rumble on SmackDown right. or even on Raw, setting up. The WrestleMania match as well, and whoever wins that match gets a shot at WrestleMania as well. That's depending on the outcome like, of the Rumble. Kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, I mean they did it before. Like I say, I mean they did it when, uh, like I said, the the year when Eddie won the title from Brock at, at uh, No Way Out, thanks to Goldberg going into their first match, yeah. and then it was Eddie and Kurt at WrestleMania at WrestleMania 20 and that. So if they could do it then, why not do it now? I'll be down for it. Right. I'll be down for it. But that was TLC, ladies and gentlemen. And plus a little extra there as well. I wanted to get that out as well. So that was part two of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Part three, we're going to jump from TLC straight in to Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And yes, more of James Ellsworth too. So we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. There's only one wrestling podcast that gives you honest, uncut opinions and the most unique trivia since WWE did the weakest link. And the only place you can hear the show stealing podcast promo every single week. Covering WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground. Max Wrestling Podcast is the place for you. Join myself, Evan Money McCabe, the Phoenix, and the Butcher. Sundays at 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern time with your host, Danny Dave, to sleep on VOC Nation and the Swerve Talk Network. Go to maxwrestling.wix.com slash maxwrestling or follow us at Max Wrestling UK for more details. Give it to the Max. Be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters channel at www.youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters for my exclusive review series that I'm doing on WCPW, What Culture Pro Wrestling, brought to you by the good folks at WhatCulture.com. Each and every week, I'll be reviewing their shows, whether it's loaded or their big upcoming shows as well, each and every week on their YouTube channel. Be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters channel for review shows each and every week. You can also download them for free on SoundCloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back to part three, ladies and gents. We're back here with Fane Black, and now we're going to go back to um, Raw and SmackDown. 
the follow-up from TLC, even though Raw had nothing to do with TLC. So, but it's the it's 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 the follow-up week from TLC. You know where I'm going with that. And we'll we'll start off with the the red brand, the Raw brand, if you will, and we'll talk about Monday Night Raw, which saw another disgusting, cruel turn involving the Flair family. I'll get to that in a second. But let's go to quick hits. Seth Rollins defeats the returning Big Show via countout because Big Show turned on Kevin Owens and choke slammed him and just walked away. Now, for those of you that don't know, Davari, all of you guys remember Davari back in the day with Mohammed Hassan and, and that, and even Mark Henry as well at one point, and even managed Kurt Angle as well. And yes, he made an appearance in TNA as well. Well, his brother wrestled on Raw, and he wrestled the debut Jack Gallagher. And Jack Gallagher made quick work of him. Just when you thought this was over, and they had their final match on the pay-per-view, yeah, Kevin Owens defeated Sami Zayn. So much for it being over. Cruiserweight champion Rich Swan defeats TJ Perkins. Based on what happened on the pre-show, Alex, uh, Alicia Fox gets beat by Bailey. The tussle in Texas saw Mark Henry make quick work of Titus O'Neil. Poor bastard. US Championship was on the line as well with Kevin Owens. With them, not Kevin Owens. Well, Kevin Owens getting involved in Roman Reigns defeating Chris Jericho. Rusev and Lana, well, Rusev and Lana, well, Lana set him up, but Rusev brutally attacked Enzo in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. The odd couple of Monday Night Raw, Cesaro and Sheamus, took on Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, and it ended in an old contest, which leads to a triple threat match this coming week on Raw, with the New Day... Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus... Well, New Day versus Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Cesaro and Sheamus. And the winner becomes Tag Team Champions. And if New Day survive, they will equal the record from Demolition. And if Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson don't win the Tag Team titles, I quit. Simple as that. How are these two not Tag Team Champions? I don't know. And yes, Raw ended on a sour note because Rick Flair, Charlotte Flair was meant to deliver an apology to her dad after what happened a couple of months ago. But obviously it was all a trap. And yes, that obviously led to what Sasha Banks coming out and all hell breaking loose. We'll get to that in a second, though. I'm sure. What is your favorite good points, bad points, shit points... Awful points, retarded points of Monday Night Raw. Um, it's more difficult because I didn't watch Monday Night Raw. Oh. <clears throat> but I do like my Enzo shenanigans, so that's what I'm gonna go with. The Enzo shenanigans. Now, that's my favorite. I gotta ask you. I'm sure you've heard what's happened with Charlotte Flair and you know the whole thing, and I'm sure you were aware of what happened with Charlotte Flair back in the day. You know when she turned on Flair, and she basically kicked. She, oh yeah. She basically yeah, yeah. she basically kicked the nature boy to the curb, basically. Yeah, yeah. Where do you see this going? I mean, do you? I mean, it, obviously it's going to be Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, Roadblock one more time for the championship. Because I have a funny feeling this is all a setup now. I don't know what it was back in the day, back when this first thing started, when she kicked her dad to the curb. But right. we're talking about the dirtiest player in the game here. Good old right. nature boy. Slick Rick. We're talking about his daughter. Right. Do you think this could be a setup? Because I have a funny feeling, watching this on Raw this past week, this is going to be a setup. You know, Char- Ric Flair comes out when Sasha wins the title, high-fives her, hugs her and whatever, and puts her over, basically, and gives her the approval. This happened on Raw, slash, uh, Charlotte slapping the taste out of her dad's mouth and basically insulting him on Raw again. 
And then it's all going to lead to Roadblock, end of the line, but still Roadblock. Right. And I just have a funny feeling Ric Flair's going to turn on Sasha. And Charlotte's going to walk out the champion again. I mean, what's your take? Do you see that happening? I mean, no, nah, man. I mean, no, like I say, we're talking about the dirtiest player in the game here. Let's I get figure, it. Figure that out. I get it. I see it. I see it, but I don't see it. Like I, they need to move on. And the reason they need to move on is because, and then they plan to move on. Like they can't push this to mania because it's just like over. Like we've we've seen it too many times in a short amount of time. And we can't go through every stipulation in the book. But that's okay because we have the backup. Like, we have Bailey versus Banks. Like, yeah. those matches from Brooklyn almost two years ago now, or a year and a half ago, rather, were really fucking good. <laughs> and it's been a while since we got them, since yeah. Bailey was on, wasn't on the main roster. Yeah. So now we can have those matches, and that's way better. Yeah. If you thought, like, yeah, if you thought the fucking, yeah, the first match in Brooklyn was something, the fucking Iron, Bo- the Iron Woman match, not the Iron Man match, as it was called. There was no fucking men in there except for the referee. But right. Iron Woman match even fucking topped it. And like I say, and like you got correctly say, I mean, if they have this match, if they do go ahead with this match for WrestleMania, Sasha Banks and Bailey. I pretty much think it was steal the fucking show, and that's that's too. saying that's saying a lot because I mean, no disrespect to the women, we're talking about women's wrestling here. Usually, it's the guys that have stole the show with you know the, the, their matches, and that and women's wrestling has never been on that level until it is now, especially at the WrestleMania because multi times they've tried to have a women's match at WrestleMania, a few times it's been cancelled or been. Bug to the pre-show, you know. Right. I think the first match last time, the triple threat match with uh, Sasha, Charlotte, and Becky, was the first real women's match in WrestleMania in how long? You know. So, I truly believe if they have, if they do go ahead with this match, Bailey versus Sasha for the women's title at WrestleMania, I'm put calling it right now. That will fucking steal the show. I think so. I'd fucking steal the show, and that would definitely. If the first match at WrestleMania last year didn't put women's wrestling on the map, that'll fucking will. That I can show you right now. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Why did we see this match on Raw? I thought this was the end of it. I mean, I mean, where do you see going into Wrestle, going into now Wrestle, what is usually called WrestleMania season? You know, there's rumors about Roman Reigns winning the championship at Roadblock and and having him walking around with both the US title and the Universal title. Kind of like what Seth Rollins did with the World Championship and the US title back when he beat Cena at uh, SummerSlam, which all led to Night of Champions when Cena eventually ended up getting the US title back. Right. Where do you see that going? I mean, I can't uh, see anything going good out of that. Yes, yes, Roman Reigns is going to be world cha- universal champion. Whoop de do. He's still going to have the US title. Whoop de do. I mean, do you really see anything benefit beneficial coming out of that? I don't think he's going to win the universal title. I think he's going to lose his match at Roadblox, um, and Kevin Owens will continue. Uh, I think he has to feud with Jericho over that belt. Before he loses it, so it would make more I don't sense. think we're in danger. I don't think I don't think we're in danger of him losing it until then. Yeah. Do you think Jericho? Do you think they will put the belt on Jericho, or do you think there's a a chance that we could see Chris Jericho Universal Champion? No, no, I don't think that's necessary. Um, I, mean, I think him challenging Kevin, like even if he comes and ruins out the match with Roman Reigns, right? He can say like, "Oh, I ruined it because I wanted to, you know, because they're kind of broken up now." So yeah, I, I ruined it because I wanted the universal title and I wanted to beat you for it. Yeah, I mean, it it, it was funny going into the match on Raw, the universal champion, the, the the U.S. title match rather, and it's funny how 
you know, the commentators, the three commentators on Raw, Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Byron Sexton, especially Michael Cole, promoting the fact that Chris Jericho has done it all in the wrestling business. He's done it all. Yeah. Except for one thing. Win the US title. Shouldn't that be two things? I'm thinking to myself, I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, he's never won the US title. I get that. And granted, the belt's been around six months, but he's also never won the U- Universal title. <laughs> I, I guess that's on the level of being a world champion. Yeah. I Yeah. I guess so, but I mean, compare that to the uh, World Championship on SmackDown. I mean, SmackDown won the grand prize when they got that on SmackDown. I, I, I guess. I don't know. Like, you got to follow the story. The story is they are the same. They are equal now. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, WWE are finding ways to make that universal title a legit title. No question. There's no question about that. Right. I liked Raw. It wasn't the greatest Raw I've ever seen. Then again, it wasn't the worst Raw I've ever seen. I have seen you're worse. Gonna get, you're only going to get like three great Raws a year. Yeah. As you should. With with any TV show, you only get like, you know, two really good episodes. Do, do you really year. think they should just cut the three hours? I, th- I don't think they should cut the three hours. What I think they should do is I think they need an off season, yeah? Yeah. They, 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 you know, sometimes less is more. In that's the that's the old just thing. just because the story is like fucking never ending like yo even soap operas have reruns during the summer like yeah yeah there's no question about that yeah they do have reruns and that I know I see a lot I, 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 I even give you I even give you like a time frame like the biggest gap in main in the mainstay pay per views is between WrestleMania which is usually around early April late March and SummerSlam. You could you could take May and June off, maybe even July, come back in August for SummerSlam. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to SmackDown, and let's talk about James Elworth some more. Hey. SmackDown Live results quick hits. AJ Styles came out, and I think was interrupted by James Ellsworth, but he came out and announced that he couldn't compete. And it was scheduled to be James Ellsworth and AJ Styles for the WWE World Championship. But as we all know, and you can clearly see it, AJ Styles got injured in that match with Dean Ambrose at TLC. And he had a cast on his foot, the ankle. So obviously he couldn't compete in that match. And despite the fact that James Ellsworth, like Fame said earlier on during the TLC review, was being a complete goof and didn't realise that he's now a heel. And, uh, yeah, Dean Ambrose came walking out and even got to the point where, despite the fact of what Mr. Ellsworth did to Mr. Ambrose at TLC, James Ellsworth's there shake, wanting to shake Dean Ambrose's hand. He even hands his hand out to shake his hand, but then Dean just walks in and dirty deeds him, just drops him right there. Oh, boy. The rematch from TLC, which saw Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton defend the tag titles against Heath Slater and Rhino, which saw the champions retain, and now it's the free bear rule. So... The next time you'll see the tag team titles defended, it could be Bray Wyatt versus Luke Har- Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper, or Randy Orton and Luke Harper, or you know, you know Wyatt. what that does though. You know, you know what that free bird rule does. It really makes you feel like Randy Orton is really part of the Wyatt family. Like maybe it's not a swerve like it was when Daniel Bryan joined them for the two weeks and did nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I I don't like the fact, however, that Randy Orton still does not wear pants. Yeah, I have noticed that. He comes out with his wrestling gear and everything, and he doesn't wear the pants like they do. Right. But it's, it's it's more noticeable <laughs> that you're not wearing pants when you're around people who are wearing pants. Yeah. And I'm not saying that he has to, like, put on the overalls and dress like a Wyatt family member. But if he and if he has some sweatpants, that would be, like, yeah. right up. Because he got that hoodie on. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, and even you know, I was going to say Daniel Bryan even wore probably the weirdest outfit that made him look like a a goat version of nails back in the day with that yeah. with that outfit. Yeah, yeah, with that yeah, outfit, that one yeah. piece. Of- yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I agree with what you're saying. I, I start, I'm starting to see where Kenny was going because I watched the thing. I, I checked out his uh, the title of his last podcast last week, which I believe you were on. Um, oh yeah, wear, wear some damn pants. Wear some damn pants, and I was thinking, what the hell is he talking about? And then I look, and I'm realizing, yeah, he's just, he, he's got a point. The Randy Orton thing, and you know, and all that. But I did. Yeah. But like you say, I mean, the idea in the first place, before I continue with the rest, the idea in the first place for the Randy Orton uh, to join the Whites was to make the White family legit. You know, because they've tried many other things in the past to make them legit, you know, even adding Braun Strowman in at one point. But it's never seemed to work, and even at one point they split them up, which was the biggest mistake. A huge mistake, in my opinion. Um but now with an established star like Randy Orton into the fold, hopefully this will take the Whites right back to the top. And hopefully at one point, like you said earlier on, maybe we'll see Bray Wyatt as WWE champion, which would be a fucking deserving thing, let me tell you. Awesome, Natalia, Cam- Carmella and Nikki Bella, triangular web continues. This little angle that's been going on and everything and with who did what, who attacked Nikki at, at Survivor Series, we said that we talked about that earlier on uh, High Bros defeat the job is known as the Ascension I'll get to Baron Corbin uh, puts Kalisto in his place in the rematch Miz, but before that Miz had a special guest Dean Ambrose on TV and like you said with the uh, the participation award handing out and people cheering for that and saying that you deserve it not because they like Dean Ambrose or hate Dean Ambrose for that matter because <laughs> it was just crazy enough to, to do so and then Dean, and then Daniel Bryan comes out and uh, makes a match for later on in the evening a main event which saw Miz defending the Intercontinental Championship against Dean Ambrose and Daniel Bryan should be and Miz should be thanking Daniel Bryan for saving him because Dane Ambrose was about to put that award so far where the sun don't shine. Oh, yeah. Chad Gable defeats Tyler Breeze, American Alpha, remember? Becky Lynch interrupted uh, Alexia Bliss SmackDown Women's Title uh, celebration and probably cashed in a rematch in the process. When would that be? I don't know. Probably next week on SmackDown if I'm you know, it won't be surprising. Like I said, there's probably not another SmackDown pay per view now until Roy Rumble at the most. So, right, unless they're willing to wait that long, but I doubt it. Um, and uh, Intercontinental Champion The Miz and Dean Ambrose, and The Miz retained thanks to a little help from his missus as well, as it always seems to be. But hey. I've got nothing to complain. I'm just getting used to it now, and and quite frankly, I'm not getting used to this four man piece on SmackDown's announcers. Did you see SmackDown? Uh, I did watch bits and pieces of SmackDown. Yeah. What was your well with the bits and pieces you watched? What was your? I mean, we've already you've already said your piece about the uh, Wyatt situation and everything. But what was your good points, bad points about Raw about SmackDown rather? Oh, uh, let's see. I, I said to tell you a good point about talking smack was when the Wyatts hijacked it. That was really cool. Um, and more so, uh, I like the Miz, like the Miz match. Like the, the Miz is the my, is Miz is my guy. Like I I believe in the Miz. <laughs> There's really no other way to put that. The Miz versus Dean Ambrose, perfect goal. Like he cheats, of course he does. That's what the Miz do. His wife is there as a new cheating tool. Like now the Miz can cheat by himself, but now he has a cheating tool as well. Like it's great. Yeah. Um, but I'll I'll speak on this because I'm gonna hurt a lot of wrestling fans right now. I'm gonna hurt their hearts. Um, American Alpha suck. They suck. Ooh. I'm sorry. They can wrestle. They can wrestle for sure. Oh my god, they can wrestle. They can wrestle for real. But they suck. Chad Gable has all the charisma. 
they thought Jason Jordan would. Jason Jordan has the looks. He doesn't have the charisma. They suck. Mm-hmm. They suck together. They're never going to – They and they get compared too often to team angle. It's not a good look. Yeah. Yeah. I, I – yeah, the poor man's team angle, uh, the, the world's greatest tag team. Yeah, that's a point. That, that's, that's not a good look for them. In that respect, now now thinking about it and everything, and <coughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I never thought of it that way in that respect. Um, yeah, man, thinking about that, yeah, they do. It is like the poor men's. I mean, there's also rumors of Shelton Benjamin actually coming back in 2017. He was supposed to come back this year, but he had an injury, which put that on the shelf. Yeah, like yeah, arm or shoulder injury, right. Yeah, and he's supposed to be coming back, and apparently he's going to be cleared in 2017, so he'll be returning in 2017. So, and he's coming to SmackDown from what it seems, so them two on SmackDown with him there, I mean, that means like that's you worse. Say, yeah, it's like you say, they, you know, correct, you're correcting what you're saying, they damn sure can wrestle. Yeah. But can they be an established tag team on Raw? Oh, now it's knocked down. I don't. Nope, Shaggy will need to go ahead and cut it. Join Two Hundred Five Live. Yeah, yeah. What's your take on Two Hundred Five Live? Because that show's been getting a lot of stick. I have not checked it out. Yeah, it's been getting a lot of stick, ladies and gentlemen. On in in terms of you know people leaving. I mean, the first show, a lot of people left, and there was a lot of empty seats there. And this is because maybe it's because of the fact that they're putting it on after SmackDown. Right. I mean, do you think they should put it on before it? Um, I mean, when you think about it, it's technically um, like the same length as Raw. But I don't think enough parents know. Because, you know, you got to remember, it's mostly parents at these events. I don't think enough parents know that 205 Live is right after SmackDown. I think they see SmackDown in and assume the show is over. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. WWE needs to really promote that to. They'll, they'll be all right though. I mean, the tickets are already bought. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's sold out. The money is still there. Yeah, definitely. And and if the cruiserweight division's still cooking, which it still is, to be honest, they could still build that up and still can be the hardest thing going around at the moment. It could be hard. It could be harder than it ever once or ever used to be. Right. If they book it right, of course. I mean, there's all this talk about we're not doing it well. It's not doing well on Smack on Raw. It should go to SmackDown and everything. At the end of the day, with the cruiserweight division, you should just why not book it on both shows? Have the champion be on both shows. Not yet. Later on, that's an idea for later on. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. Obviously, not yet. Let's build it up first to see where it goes, and then have it that way because. It's kind of odd to see one division on Raw and SmackDown have got some cruiserweights and they're doing fuck all with them at the moment. You know, all right, this police right. don't it's, get me wrong. It's all, it's all just blending together. I mean, it, it, like you said, it's got to build it. Got to build itself up. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to see that happen. I mean, obviously not with the, the other belts and everything, but just that one. You know, have one big whole cruiserweight division. But like, this, but like I say, you've got to build it up first. And you've got to right. make sure it's, it's over with the people because if you're doing something first and it's not over with the people or you haven't got like a, a, an established platform, an established segment for it which can get over with the people, then it's going to be one big huge clusterfuck at the end of the day. So, yeah. but that what, else, what else? Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting close to uh, rap time. Yeah. Uh, Smackdown. That's about it on that one. I, I mean, just the uh, James Ellsworth situation. I mean, what's your take on that? The whole main event. <laughs> the whole main event we saw James Ellsworth get involved, even though he took a dirty deeds from Dean Ambrose earlier on in the show. But Mr. Dean Ambrose is out there wrestling his heart out. And he did. He put on a good match. He put on a good performance against the mess. But once again... He gets screwed by James Ellsworth. And not only has James Ellsworth now cost him the world title, he seems to have cost him the Intercontinental Championship too. 
where do you see this going? Because obviously it's going to be James Ellsworth, Dean Ambrose one on one. Where do you see this going? Um, I don't see. I don't. I, I like I said, if they do that, AJ Styles will be the one that's going to help James Ellsworth to get back at Dean Ambrose for all that bullshit. And it, they'll they'll end up like I said, James Ellsworth will end up four and zero oh, with three victories over AJ Styles and one over Dean Ambrose. Yeah, but don't you think we yeah we said that earlier on? But don't you think that Dean Ambrose is just going to come out? I mean, and AJ Styles is going to have nothing to do with this, and then James and Dean Ambrose just comes out and just beats the tar out of him and ends it right there. Like I, like, like right now, you can't end it because James Ellsworth still has a WWE title shot. That's yeah, true. You can't end the story. You can't end the story unless you conclude it. And the fact that Dean Ambrose is now involved and feels robbed, you know, it's just even better. Dean Ambrose, AJ Styles, James Ellsworth, triple threat match for the WWE World Championship. Look out for it, guys, because it's coming. I'm pretty sure it's coming. We'll see. It's coming Me. down the road. I've, I, I, it, it's, I, it's, it's from what from from what I'm seeing from this story it's the only way they can go <laughs> to be honest whether we like james ellsworth or not whether we want to put him in this or not at the end of the day it's gonna go it's gonna go down this route and if the undertaker thing doesn't happen maybe this could go for the royal rumble this triple threat match nah, for the, for this, this, will be, this will be on smackdown I, yo james ellsworth can't main event no royal rumble yeah you can't even participate i don't think it'd be if he participates in the royal rumble then Oh boy! Right, he's gonna be in the Royal Rumble. He's gonna be in the Royal. Rumble. He's gonna eliminate Braun Strowman. Oh boy! Wow! What do you think about that? Maybe that'll be his revenge for what happened with him in Survivor Series. Right, that'll, 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 that'll conclude. That'll conclude that storyline. Yeah. See, I write this shit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a master at this. Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Uh, yeah, that about wraps this bit up. That's all <laughs> I can say on that one. Wow. That was interesting to say the very least. Uh, that was a really good conclusion. Good conclusion indeed. Yeah, and we'll end up on there. Uh, this has been part three of the Wrestling Matters podcast. I'm going to be back right after this quick timeout with feature length interview because I didn't play it last week, so I'm going to play it this week. Like I said, I was going to do because I make promises on this show and I like to, you know, go bye bye promises. And I'm going to play the full length. Uh, part of the Alexa Rose interview. Finish that off this week, hopefully. So, I'll be. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the part of the interview, and then I'll be back right after that with an outro. So, stay tuned. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday. Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast now on Twitter at WM Podcast for all professional wrestling news. Wrestling Matters Wrestling fans. Yeah, there's, and... nothing, there's nothing wrong with getting sick with, people, with somebody saying to you, you remind me of this person, this person, but, you know, there is, the, 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 you're right, you, they does get the time that you want to be your own person, you want to be your own, you know, your own wrestler, if you will. Though the way you come across in the ring. You know, exactly. You you want to be your own, like you say, own Alexa Rose. You don't want to be, you know, compared to somebody else. You want to be you. At the end of the day, yeah, I, I do get that. But sometimes it's sometimes it's a compliment being compared to somebody, or being compared to a wrestler that you may have grown up with and everything like that. But yeah, um, so I've covered this on my podcast, and. It, it, it's it's the topic that never goes away. No, it's the topic that just will not go away. And when you think it's gone away, people seem to bring it back and everything, you know, and pull it back in. Just when you think it's gone away. John Cena turning heel. Oh, I wish. Yeah. 
Well, you've just basically answered the question, basically, because, like I said, do you think this is ever going to happen? Because I covered something on the upcoming podcast that I found out that apparently WWE creative are really pushing to turn this guy heel. And there's even a thought or a rumor that the creative direction is to have him turn like he did, like Hogan did in 96 when he joined the NWO. That kind of a way. Uh, kind of thing um, but many people the many times that you know they even put out w, they even put out top tens of where he should have turned heel and this this and this and the many heelish things that he's done throughout his career and everything do you think this is ever going to happen because there's one guy that prevents this no matter how much the creative team go oh yeah we're going to we want him to do this and the other day. there's one guy that prevents this and that's Vince McMahon do you think Vince McMahon's scared to turn him heel? Honestly, it, it sounds silly for me to say it, and I don't know if it's going to make sense to a lot of people, but I think that the way that John Cena is, the way people react to him, some people say he's a face. Some say he's a heel. I say that he does both at the same time and he's one of those rare people that can do it. I've never, honestly, this is why I respect John Cena. He's one of the rare people that can do heel and face at the same time. Mm. There's not that many people that can do it. There's, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. There's been The Undertaker. There's been The Rock. But to be the face of the company at for John Cena, he's been able to do both and people just refuse to see it. Because a lot of people want to see him go heel. Mm. I want to see John Cena go heel. Did it ever occur to anybody that by not going heel, John Cena technically went heel on all of us by refusing to go heel? Like, you want me to be the bad guy, but I'm not going to be the bad guy. And you're going to still boo me anyways. So what's the difference? (laughs) You know, like he just... Somehow, John Cena figured out that missing piece of the puzzle of what it takes to be a wrestler. And that one missing piece is only something that he will know himself because only he can be able to execute it. There is not that many people that can do it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's, my, that's always been my theory in a way. I mean, but it's like the subject that never seems to just go away. And when, like I say, when you think it's gone away, people just put it back and think it's going to happen at the end of the day. And, and like we said I before, think he already has because the way he carries himself sometimes, the way we view traditional heels and faces, what John Cena is doing, I feel, is kind of bending that traditional view to make people view him as a face but boo him as a heel. Mm. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with it i mean it, it's it's really hard to explain but like a lot of people like to sing john cena sucks yeah. every time this theme song comes on he comes out everybody says john cena sucks but then those are the exact same people that say let's go cena and cena sucks yeah and he he thrives off that mm-hmm. he absolutely thrives off that and like we were saying before we started recording this as well he is the modern day hulk hogan he, he is really now is. He, he is now to what Hogan used to be back in the 80s. I would have said Hulk. I would have said Austin as well. But then again, he wasn't anti, was he? You know, Austin was the anti-hero. So you'd have to compare with Hulk Hogan in terms of, you know, that. And at least in my opinion, what Vince McMahon is probably scared of, that he ain't going to be drawing the money. Because let's face it, who's the money bags in WWE in terms of wrestlers? John Cena. Because mm-hmm. people people buy his merchandise. He's the he's probably the number one guy since Austin in terms of merchandise that people buy. You know, whether mm-hmm. he's overshadowed Austin or anything like that. I mean, Austin's still the biggest draw to this very day. But many people believe, or many people see John Cena, especially Vince McMahon, as the money bags of WWE. He draws him the money. And I believe what Vince McMahon is scared of would this work? Because at the end of the day, what people have got to understand is this. This ain't 1996. We're in 2016. 
the whole the whole thing with Hogan worked because people want at the time people wanted the change. Yeah. People wanted that change. People wanted to see Hogan change. And when he came out, when he arrived in WCW in 94, people were like booing him anyway, kind of like to John Cena. You know, people were booing him. They were sick of the Hulkamania stuff because they thought, oh, that's Hulkamania for WWE, man. He was came from WWE. You should have saved that for Hulkamania. Basically, they probably wanted him to come down to WCW and be a different character, but they didn't. They got the Hulkamania bit for two years. And then in 96, the whole world changed. Mm-hmm. And he became Hollywood Hogan, which worked a treat, even though you were scared to do it at one point uh, as well. But it worked out for him. Many fans believe that it would probably work for John as well. But I, I firmly believe that Vince McMahon is scared that it won't work. And that's okay, but you never know until you try it. You never know yeah, until but- you try it. I think that, you know, there have been times where Cena has shown signs as heel and it just, it, it never really worked because the crowd still enjoyed it because they wanted to see that. I feel like it, it'll make Vince more money if John Cena went heel, but at the same time, what Cena's doing is being a heel by being a face. Yeah. A lot of people nowadays, it, the world is so immersed in such negativity that, and this is why the New Day works, because he has that power of positivity. I hate to say it, but he is that hope that we all have at the end of the day. Like, you come from a hard day of work and you hope for that one good thing that happens. John Cena represents, literally physically, he's the embodiment of that one little hope in the back of your head that tells you, you can do it. That little voice in your head that says, you can go that extra mile. You can, you know, walk the extra block. You're almost home. You're almost there. You know, he's that little hope at the end of the road that makes you feel like, I can freaking conquer the world. And when he doesn't go heal the way we want him to, that's when we start to hate him. And that's when he becomes the heel because it's like, you know, like, take that step, John. Take that step, John. And the fact that he's flirting with that step with all of us, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm pushing my foot over the border. You know, it, it has us in that, like, suspended um, disbelief that, no, nah, he's not going to do it. Yes, he's going to do it. You know, it, it has us kind of at that precipice with him. And that's what a lot of the fans are, like, feeding off of because it's like, should we go past that precipice or should we have that hope that John Cena has and just stay here? You know, should we keep going? Should we keep going? Should we stay? Should we go? You know, it's that unknown that John Cena like presents to us through like hope and determination. Like a lot of people are so suspended in disbelief that, you know, angels don't exist. Aliens don't exist. Our government's corrupt and, and such. But I feel like John Cena gives us that kind of hope that everything's going to be okay. He's like the happy little rainbow sunshine, you know, that you see that it's like, all right, everything's going to be good. But at the same time, like when you're in a bad mood, you, you see him and it's like, I don't want to be happy at the moment. So at the, he's the face for those that need that like extra pick me up. And he's that heel for those that just don't want to see that happiness and positivity. And that's how I personally, like, I don't know if that really makes sense to anybody that's listening, but I feel like that's how, you know, John Cena is able to play around with the whole face and heel type of thing within the wrestling world and how he does it so successfully. Even when he does um, Total uh, Divas or Total Bellas or whatever, you know, you see, like, a a side of him and you're like, well, he's kind of a dick, but at the same time, I could kind of see where he's coming from. So... With John Cena, it's like, I want to see him go completely heel, but I feel like he's already gone heel in a way when we need him to be. It's just that we don't expect it because we don't see it that way. We're just looking at him, you know, he's being complete face or whatever on the external side of it, but internally... We're seeing it as if he's kind of pushing our buttons and making us think, oh, this whole crap isn't going to work. This love, peace, and unity or whatever is all a bunch of garbage. And that's what makes him heal. 
Definitely works. It works for him, no question about that. Uh, do you obviously are you aware of the British indie wrestling scene, the British wrestling over here in the UK? I've just started getting into it actually because, um, like I said, I wrestled Masha Slamovich and she's wrestled in Japan, and I was always familiar with um, uh, Japan wrestling, Poruesu, and um, Lucha Libre in Mexico and all the you know South American borders. And I just started getting into, you know, English wrestling, British wrestling, and um, even Indian wrestling. Like, I've just started getting into it because, you know, I've been, I always try to kind of expand my knowledge and expand what I learn and know by, you know, seeing what I do know and then just kind of, I, I like to push my boundaries. So I've yeah. just been starting to get into it and I feel like, it's really rough, like Japan, like overseas, it's really, really like um, some real tough wrestling and, and real um, grittiness. And that, uh, you know, like New York and America is really trying hard to like maintain that grittiness. But I feel like across the seas, it's just a lot more grittier and, and it's more legitimate. Yeah. Especially over here in the UK with uh, insane championship wrestling, and majority of the people here over here in the UK that compete in the wrestling scene, have also competed in places like TNA and Evolve and and stuff like that as well. Speaking of Evolve and speaking of TNA, we'll get to TNA in a second because I want to get your opinion on the state of TNA and what you think of TNA as a brand as well and all that. But I want to talk about the WWE Network because I read and I've even covered this on my podcast, about them having future plans for the network. At the moment right now, you sign up for the network, you get nine ninety nine a month for all the great stuff that's on there. I see. But you've got to understand this as well. They're also building a an easy... Uh, like an easy plan for them, like, a, like pa- bringing out separate packages for the network with, with which subscribers to, can sign up for. Now, don't get me wrong... I know why they're doing it, like I said, to get more subscribers. Not that they've already got that much they've got anyway, but they want to get more subscribers on. So they're bringing out like a free package for the people where you can get like the main four for free, which is WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble and Survivor Series. But you won't get the other stuff on there. And there's a few other packages as well. One package in particular that I'm interested in, and which I want to get your opinion on, is them going above and beyond, not just having WWE content on there, maybe bringing indie promotions yeah. on there as well. People like TNA, once they get their shit together, of course, uh, <laughs> Evolve, and stuff like that as well, and even Ring of Honor, even though I don't, I guess, like Solo Monster correctly said, I don't think you can call Ring of Honor an indie promotion, considering the fact that they've been you know, they're, they're owned by St. Clair Broadcasting, for crying out loud. I don't think you could take them as an indie promotion. So, at the end of the day, do you think that is good? And and there's also been talks of putting them, like bringing indie promotions in, and putting them in, in like a 14.99 or 14 or 15 pound package. I believe that's a problem, and that could be costly. I think... They should just keep them in the ten nine the nine ninety nine package, and that would definitely attract other subscribers, even subscribers of fans that are not of WWE that watch these promotions and think, "Oh, wait a minute, there you go. There's an opportunity we can go and sign up and watch these promotions on here as well." And hell, maybe give people where the fuck maybe are give you? the promotions a chance to create like a TV show. As well for their for their station for their uh, promotion as well like you get all these like NXT for example get weekly shows and everything because not a lot of promotions especially over in the UK with Progress and everything and Progress was mentioned as one of them as well because they've got the cruiserweight division uh, agreement as well they were mentioned in there as well maybe they can get like a TV show running on their network as well do you think it's a mistake if they go beyond the nine ninety nine package? And go like a higher, and do you think they should keep 
the nine ninety pack the nine ninety nine package as the highest they can go and bring all these in, or do you think they should expand and add like a higher package, maybe a fourteen ninety nine package to bring these indie promotions in to give that subscriber thinking? Okay, maybe they can bust up to that. Do you think that's a mistake going higher than nine ninety nine? Because I think it is. What's your take on it? Honestly, I really feel like the WWE should stay with the WWE, um, because a lot of these promotions have to rely on these um, pay per views in order to make um, revenue for their product. Um. I mean, if they do work a plan with the WWE, it would have to be, like, very, very thought out and drawn out to make sure that these promotions do make money. But at the same time, they're pretty much, like, selling themselves to the WWE just to kind of gain revenue. And I feel like a lot of these promotions don't really need that to do so. So... Honestly, no. I don't think the WWE should incorporate any independent shows on their network. Um, they're better off with what they have already and should just kind of stick with it and let the promotions kind of make their money the way they should just to kind of, you know, enforce that kind of competition. You know, it's kind of not fair if wrestling is just like solely owned by one company. You want to kind of give it variety and you want to make sure that the product has variety i mean you're not going to go to like one steakhouse to buy like a steak and not oh, try oh. any other steakhouses out and find out that they're actually better i mean that's the whole reason with, with wrestling it's uh it's just like any other business you know you got to be able to sell your product it's like the toilet paper business to be simple about it you know like Charmin and scott tissues and all these other companies they're all like vying for like dominion over who's the better toilet paper company but y you gotta kind of keep it like you gotta keep that kind of friendly competition alive because if not then you know you're forced to take the same brand and then have to deal with that and no matter how many times that they change it it's never going to be the same at the end of the day it's going to constantly evolve and you know you're you're not going to be able to like try something different that might be a little bit better if there's only one company like kind of in charge of everything. Hmm. Hey, Whatever. pretty much in there as well, man. I mean, it's like I said, it's a great idea, but like I said, and like you correctly said that I totally agree with what you say. But if they go above the nine ninety nine policy or the nine ninety nine package there. I know what they're doing. I know what they're trying to do when they're trying to figure out this, you know, figure out what to do and everything. Uh, they're trying to get new subscribers. I get that. But if they go above nine ninety nine, they may lose subscribers as much as they're, as much as they try to plan to get subscribers. They will lose more because I don't think people will be willing to pay whatever the price is to just because to get these four to get these other promotions in or whatever plan they're trying to do. They should just stick with nine ninety nine because mm -hmm. say they do say they do bring these indie promotions in and I wasn't a fan and I wasn't a subscriber which I am but if I wasn't a subscriber and they did bring these indie promotions in I'd definitely sign up I'd be like boom 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 nine ninety nine done kind of thing um, evolve Ring of Honor and Progress Wrestling as well was in there as well what's your take on ICW? The Scottish, the, the, the Scottish uh, British wrestling promotion, which is making big waves, because I know you guys get it over there on the Fight Network. Over there, what's your take on that as a company? Because, like I say, the majority of the wrestlers on there go to TNA as well. You know, Drew Galloway, Grado, and people like that. So, have you ever come across that promotion? Have you ever got to see some of their their work? I've seen some of it, not all of it, but um, I've been actually thoroughly happy with the product, so I can't really say anything negative about it, but I haven't seen enough of it to make a real actual comment and evaluation of it. Fair enough. I was going to say you should subscribe. Um, take it for somebody who's a subscriber. I recommend you subscribe to their uh, on-demand service. They have an on-demand service. And if you're not educated on ICW, you will be if you ever sign up for that on-demand service. 
no question about that. For those information right now, insane champ, insanewrestling.co.uk if you want to, <laughs> more information on that as well. Okay. Uh, as well, just for the viewers as well, it's it, it's just good stuff as well, and it, it really is. And like I say, they, in my opinion, ICW, and I've always said this, is what wrestling should be like today. Not PG sh- stuff. Right, not that yeah. there's anything wrong with PG, but, you know, not PG stuff. Under 18, just having good fun and having a good laugh <laughs> and just watching some great wrestling as well because they do they do burn on good right. shows as well um, and like I say if you ever get the opportunity to watch ICW go for it especially the especially the I pay per view that's coming up this November if you ever get the chance to, to get the I pay per view they've got a show on I pay per view called oh. Fear and Loathing uh, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it's their biggest show of the year and the whole thing it's their biggest show of the year and the main piece of that puzzle, Mick Foley is going to be on the show as well. Yes, Mick Foley, commis- uh, commissioner of Raw, or general manager of Raw, sorry. But the main priority there everybody's talking about is Team 3D challenge for the ICW tag team ch- titles. That's right, the Dudley boys. And mm-hmm. Kurt Angle is even on the show too. Good old Olympic hero Kurt Angle as well. So that's the huge show for them. So if you ever get the opportunity to see some ICW or if you want me to send you the links so you can check it out yourselves as well. ICW do have a YouTube channel. I don't think they use it that much, but they do have a YouTube channel. But like I say, if you ever get the opportunity to see ICW, highly, 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 highly recommend it. Right. Speaking of TNA, I'm going to end this. We're coming close to the end now of this uh, interview. Um, I know, <laughs> but hopefully, on the, hopefully, sometime down the road we can do this again, because I've really mm-hmm. enjoyed. I've actually enjoyed this interview. But we need to talk about TNA. I want to get your opinion on TNA as a brand, because we all know the state that it's in. We all know the, you know, the stuff that's been going on behind the scenes. Them owing money. Them owing Billy Corgan money. You know, Billy Corgan suing them, getting a restraining order against them. Everybody wanting Dixie out. You know, because let's face it, and I've said this many, many times, TNA is not the same brand that it used to be back in the day. Mm. You know, back in the day when they were busting out five-star pay-per-views and having these great matches, back when they had an X Division, and I still don't believe they have an X Division now, even though they have an X Division belt. But, uh, yeah, what is your take on TNA as a whole and as a brand, and what is your take on, on, on the saga that is surrounding the company right now. My honest opinion, and we spoke about this before, like, I feel like if anything can save the company, and and this is saying this from the heart, I feel like Matt Hardy can, because ever since he came into CNA, it was just like the most entertaining wrestling I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it, it just sucks from the perspective of the company. Mm. Like, I really had high hopes for Whoa. Billy Corgan to be able to, like, kind of Dude, revive the company. Down, mm. I really, really want to see it, like, flourish and yeah. build up. It, it's going to take a lot of work, I feel, but I really don't want to see TNA fall because of, you know, lack of proper business. It, it just sucks that that's the case. It kind of just shows people the ugly side of wrestling where, you know, business doesn't get taken care of the way it's supposed to. I don't know if you agree with this, <laughs> but I've always dubbed, I've dubbed, since, D, since TNA has gone down the pike hole of where, into, the, into the situation where it's gone, I've always dubbed TNA now... What, TNA is now what WCW was back in the early 90s. You know, they're losing money, still putting on good wrestling. You know, I've, I've never doubted the, the in-ring product of the brand. The in-ring product is still very good. There's no question about that. And yet, like you correctly say, Billy Corgan seems to have a mind for it. Let's face it, Billy Corgan had fingerprints all over the, the decay stuff as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. Like I say, and, and you know Billy Colgan had a fingerprint on the Decay stuff with the theme song as well because the theme song is Marilyn Manson and obviously he had to put his two cents in to get that sorted oh, out. Well. And obviously he's probably buddies with, with Manson as well. And there's all this other stuff as well. And like you correctly say as well with Matt Hardy of all people. Uh-huh. Matt Hardy wanted to get away from WWE and everything. And he was going down the shitter. And, you know, he didn't know what to do with himself. All these drug problems. And now, now look at him. He's on top of the world. And I... I have very different opinions on this Broken Hardy stuff. Especially the first time I saw their final deletion match, him and Jeff Hardy at the backyard stuff. I never got into that as well. But I read it I read something on the video, there was a title on the video that I came across the other day. Is broken Matt Hardy what pro wrestling needed? I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but if it's de- it's definitely what TNA needed. Oh, I think wrestling. it was definitely what TNA needed. Yeah, it's definitely what TNA needed uh, in that respect. I mean, what do you think should happen? I mean, we all know Billy Corgan has a, you know, a business mind for it. There's even talks about it being rebranded as well. Uh, Billy rebranding the the brand TNA and getting rid of it. I mean, like I say, TNA is probably the only wrestling promotion that I know that has two names, Impact Wrestling TNA. You know, it's, it, it, it's crazy stuff. But... If the main priority or the main problem that TNA is in the situation where it's in is Dixie. Now, I'm not bashing Dixie the person, because like I said, Dixie's probably a sweetheart and whatever. You know, she is probably a nice person outside of it and everything, but people seem to be blaming her. And people, and you know, that's why Billy Corgan's probably blaming her, because she wants them to sell to him so he can get this sorted out, but she's unwilling to sell back in the day. I mean, what's your whole take on that? Do you think Dixie should just take a chunk of their money, take a chunk of the money that she'll get up and leave and allow Billy Corgan to run the company and get out of TNA for good? Or do you think they could be, if Billy Corgan takes over, do you think there still could be a place for, for Dixie in TNA? Honestly, I don't think so because um, theatrically, she really doesn't seem like Whoa. wrestling material. She just seems like, you know, a, a little kid with a new toy that daddy you know, pr- printed in. what they know. Yeah, daddy printed, giving her money, injection mm-hmm. money, investing money into the brand and everything and, and that kind of stuff. That's the only reason she's been doing what she's doing. It's because of her father as well. And like I've said many, many times, and like I said on this episode of podcast, it's gone. Dixie needs to leave, and allow Billy Corgan to take over. I mean, I, what you what you're afraid of? The guy's obviously got a vision for the business, and like you correctly said before we started recording this, he's a guy that used to run. He's a guy that was the lead singer of probably one of the best bands of the nineties, oh, Smashing Pumpkins. And now look at him. He seems to have a business sense. I think you told me that he had a company. A wrestling promotion on the side kind of thing he's a wrestling fan hell at one point he was associated with ecw the old ecw as well let him take over if this is what it needs then let him take over i mean what's your take on that be sure to listen to the sunday segway wrestling podcast what what every sunday with kenny killer and the gowden sugar shoes yes Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to this part, the outro part of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Hope you enjoyed the Alexa Rose interview there. That was a that was a really good interview, man. I really enjoyed listening to that. That was great. I was in the back. I know. I mean, sorry, I didn't say anything, but I was in the back. You know, yeah, yeah. being quiet. No worries. Uh, I will be putting that full audio up this week. It'll be on the YouTube channel and 
the wrestling, the, the, the YouTube channel, Wrestling Matters, AJW Wrestling Matters, where you can hear all the other podcasts as well that I do. And also download it for free on SoundCloud as well, where you can download all the other podcasts as well. Every other episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast, download that for free on soundcloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters if you listen to this whether you listen to this on soundcloud or youtube all the links will be in the description below also this episode again guys has been on the swerve taunt network just like fame black he's been on every <laughs> he's invaded the swerve taunt network this past month but you can also um, listen to this Yep, you have total listened to this just like kenny and sunday segway also check out sunday segway tv as well Offshoot Radio, Max Wrestling, all that good stuff on there as well. Each and every week, you know where it's at. Check it out, guys. You will not be disappointed as well. I can't stress that enough. You will not be disappointed. Also, shout out to Rick Dara of Talk Brunch. Shout out to Michael Larkin as well. A salute to you, sir. And hopefully we can get you on in the new year. Enjoy your vacation as well. And uh, yeah, shout out to Mystery Island as well. Shout out to all my partners. OSW TV, like I say, guys, Mystery Island, 56 to 58, Oxton Road and Birkenhead. Be sure to check them all out, guys. You know, it is what it is at the end of the day. And now I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to thank Fame Black for coming on the show, making his debut, and having a damn good time because it's been a lot of fun. And now I'm going to shut up and let him tell you where he can, where you can find him on this beautiful world that is social media. Take it away, sir. <laughs> Wow, uh, that was that was like uh, that was a better outro than an intro. I'm, I'm gonna say, but um, yeah, you can find me on all social media at Fame Black. That's F A M E B L A C K. I am the Snapchat Extraordinaire, and I just got picked up by Snapchat to do a show every single Wednesday called My WCW. It's about it's not about World Championship Wrestling. I promise you, it's actually about women, and I tell a story about a woman every single Wednesday on Snapchat. If you don't use Snapchat for anything else, use it for that, and also. Be be sure to check me out on all these Swerve Talk. Uh, I've been on Sunday Segway. I've been on Max Wrestling. I'm on the Wrestling Matters podcast. So, like, check me out all over the place. All you got to do is search Fame Black. Yeah. And remember, guys, Wrestling Matters. And I'll have to check out that show as well. I'm actually on uh, I'm actually on uh, Snapchat myself. You can follow me and add me on Snapchat at TonyWalker30 as well. So I'll have to check that out. I'll have to check that yeah, out man, as well. Do man. it. I'll have to check you won't, that out. You yeah, how, how do you say it? You will not be disappointed. Yeah, there you go. Not be disappointed, yeah. I'll have to check that out, definitely. It gives me something to do on Snapchat as well. And that about wraps it up for the Wrestling Matters podcast, guys. For Fame Black, my name is Anthony Walker. Until next time, guys, episode 142. Peace out. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. See you later. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Consents the bottom line. Go, 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 sub, sub.